In today's video, we take a look at a woman who says that there are women who pay alimonies too, and they are not thrilled about it, and in this clip we see a man who has to pay child support for a kid that is not his. A Tulsa man is ordered to pay child support for a baby that's not his. Thomas tells us he wants to get Oklahoma's law changed in hopes of helping other men in the same situation. News on 6 Crime reporter Lori Fulbright explains how the law works. When Thomas's high school girlfriend got pregnant, he married her, and then five months later, she gave birth to a baby boy, and he believed he had a son. But as often happens with young marriages, theirs fell apart, and the boy was about three years old when Thomas decided to get a paternity test. It comes back as 0%. I was in my office. I saw that. You know, I, I should have I expected it, but I didn't, and it hit me. And I was next to my coworker at that time, and I was telling her I was just shocked by how someone could do this to someone. A judge ordered Thomas to take another DNA test. He did, same result. So at first, the judge ruled Thomas was off the hook financially, but then reversed that decision because Oklahoma law says men must question paternity within two years of the child's birth. Thomas says he has no reason to question it before he did, but because he missed that deadline, the judge ordered him to pay around $500 a month in child support, plus nearly $15,000 in back support, plus interest, all for a child that's not his. I wish I was telling a lie. I wish this wasn't the truth, but it is. That's what makes it so crazy. And everyone I talk to about this, can't it. they can't believe where are the court systems coming from? Thomas wants lawmakers to change the law. He believes DNA matters regardless of when a man learns he's not the father of a child, especially if that man was lied to. But even if the law changes, it'll be too late for Thomas. It's done. I mean, it's, it's already done. That's the law. So basically, once a child reaches the age of two, the presumed father is deemed to be the legal father under Oklahoma law. In Tulsa, Lori Fulbright, News on 6. Not only him, these stupid procedures have screwed many men over the past decades, but as a man, you are just expected to suck it up and not make a fuss about it, or you might end up in jail. As this guy would if he does not pay the child support for a kid that is not even his, and then you get women like her who are upset because they also have to pay child support and alimonies to their exes. The typical narrative around child support and alimony is that, for better or worse, the husband pays it to their ex-wives. But there's a growing demographic of women who emerge from their marriages as the payers not the recipients of alimony and child support. Some of them have even coined the term for this phenomenon and they joke and say it's that they pay galimony. And while no one is ever thrilled at the prospect of writing checks to an ex, divorce attorneys report that a rising population of women are the payers and their reaction to having to support their ex-spouse is pure hot rage. Some, especially those with children, are just fine about providing financial support. But there is a subset who do feel angry at the financial setup. Often, these are women whose husbands did not expect to be the lower earning partner in their marriage and subsequently did not take the role reversal well. So what? Us men have not taken it well from the time these stupid laws were introduced, and what happened to the equality women fought for? What happened to the, I can do everything a man can do? Men have taken the heat from these laws, and now it's the women's turn to take their share of it. Because as this woman said, not all divorced women are victims. Well, all of my friends who prioritized having kids in their 20s are all now single moms at 40 and divorced. I got so many of these comments on my last video, so I'm going to touch on it now. Disregarding exceptional reasons such as real abuse, the fact is 80% of women are the ones ending marriages, 90% if they have a degree. Now, I've known about this statistic way before Jordan Peterson started popping off, and unfortunately, it was due to my own research because I saw how many of my female friends were leaving their husbands. I'm very tired of this victim mentality that has manifested within the female realm. It is hard for me to have empathy for single divorced moms when 90% of the time they are at fault for it. It is completely self-inflicted. I'm also coming from a place of self-critique because believe it or not, just like every woman in America, I have succumbed to some of those thoughts. 
but we listen to social media and mass media and we tell ourselves that there's someone else there that's going to treat us even better and we neglect the other party which is our husbands and then all the children that are involved as well oh but let's not forget the vows you took you cannot discredit my theory of prioritizing a family first and then working on a career all because you have women that fall in that 90 percent category that left their husbands now just wait for this comment section to blow up on all the women that tell me they are the exception that 90 percent are leaving because the men are so terrible see right there that is what a smart and dignified woman looks and talks like. Because what she said is so true. Most of these women who divorce their husband, break their vows, tear their family apart, think that the grass is greener on the other side. But after getting a reality check, they are filled with regret. As would this woman be because of her stupid list of criteria. Men I would never date as a black woman. Number one, men who have never dated a person of color or a black woman before. I'm a college course. This is not high school and this is not middle school. I am not here to teach you about what it means to date a black woman. I'm not explaining to you why I wear a bonnet before I go to bed. I'm not explaining to you what it means to get invited to the cookout. You just got to get those prerequisites in or else you're going to fail. Two, non-black men who only date black women. This is weird. I get it. Black women are great. Black women are beautiful. But to say you only date black women and you are not black, it's kind of fetishizing. And then on top of that, when you say you like me, I have to wonder, do you like me for me or do you like me because I'm black? Three, new age Republicans. Used to be a time when you could have Republican friends if you were a liberal person like myself. You could date Republicans if you were a liberal person like myself. Uh, but now, the way the Republican Party is right now, it's, 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 not, it's not the same, and I'm definitely not with it. I wish good luck to you for finding a man who fulfills all of your stupid demands. Because the way you are going, you are really headed for only one direction, and that is solitude for life. I have a confession to make. Um, <clears throat> I was watching this video with this lady. I look fashion. And this lady, she was, she had posted. It was her son and her um, her husband. So it was, it would be her son's stepdad. And she was posting, and it was like how they were so in sync or whatever. And she was happy that she had found someone. And so my confession is, for like a slight second, I was a little salty, right? Um, I am 100% content in my singleness for me, but there's a big part of me that wanted my kids to have an in-home male figure, if that makes sense. So like I wanted, which is part of the reason why I stopped dating, because I wasn't dating for me for real. I was dating so I could get them a new daddy. Um, and being that they're now teenagers, um, you know, they're too old for some man to come in and start loving on their mama and being like, um, um, a new dad for them now, so, uh, the time is gone, can't take it back, I don't regret things, because I feel like I focus more so on raising my kids than I did on trying to look for love, or let love find me, or whatever term you want to do, want to use, um, because like I said in another video, they be keeping me busy, so it's hard for me to put myself out there to catch something when, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to make sure that my kids know what they need to do, so.